as you guys think, and you're several years in now, how are you thinking about continuing to, to push the diversity agenda? So we try and reflect the cities that we're in. So we're across Europe and also across Asia. Um, and one of our aims of diversity is always to try and reflect the makeup of whichever city we're in. Yeah. Um, and we've still, to be honest, got a lot of work to do. Uh, there are no easy wins around diversity. One of the things that we're trying to do is to build more communities before people apply to Entrepreneur First to show what is possible. And so what we're trying to do is to get more diverse potential founders into our office, build those communities so that they know that this is even possible. Um, yeah. That this is a, Entrepreneur First is a place that does welcome them and um, can help them achieve whatever they want to do in their founding career. Mm. So it's my concern at the moment is that we aren't getting, we aren't seeing enough diverse people even consider entrepreneurship, tech entrepreneurship. Mm. And so really that consideration point is where we're doing a lot of a lot of work. And if you go back even into universities and the STEM subjects, if you mm. like, is there more that could be done at that level to help people sort of think through what their options are? And this is a slightly personal question because mm. I, I did a chemistry degree and the vast majority of my female friends became accountants. Oh, really? um, and I think because they knew they didn't want to work in a lab and it was a very structured, clear path yeah. for them to upskill and train and sort of see a way forward that would sort of work with the kind of lives that they wanted. Mm. Um, I was at the strange end of the spectrum going into consultancy even, let alone becoming an entrepreneur. Yeah, I think one of the challenges we see is that for women who have been trained in a STEM subject, they're incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're a sort of rare asset. And so often we lose women in our recruiting pipeline because they've had two or three mm. absolutely amazing offers to go and you know work in Silicon Valley or go and join whatever it may be. And so we are seeing that um, when women are coming through our pipeline, they're actually often being pulled out of the pipeline in a way that their male peers aren't. Um, mm. I don't know how we change that. Um, I think that there is still something that we need to do around helping um, women understand the risk associated with entrepreneurship. I think often women mm. see it, perceive it to be more risky than their male peers. Whereas actually I think one of the things I'm always keen to push is the idea that actually the real risk is not becoming a founder. You know, if you do have a Facebook or Google inside you somewhere, the real risk is not trying and not seeing if you can make that happen, rather than, you know, maybe failing, but still having that safe job, you know, ready to snap you up.